Hey, we have Alvin Brown with us uh, and his lovely book called Journey to Personal Greatness, Mind, Body, and Soul. I did put a link on the side of the comment we have here where you can purchase his book or learn a little bit more about Alvin. Uh, so today I'm just going to ask him a couple of questions about his journey and some things that I want to know more about from his book. And then at the end, we'll have a couple moments for you to ask some questions, whether you write them um, on the slide chat or you can sit in a little bit later, okay? Uh, so hi, Alvin. Welcome, and thank you so much for taking part with uh, in this with me today. All right, all right. Thank you. I'm just uh, let me get rid of that pop up. Okay. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I know. Welcome to the welcome to the media. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Love sharing the message and love sharing the journey. And uh, I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, and if you want to, I, I don't really know how to sum up your entire journey because when I read about all the things that you do, it's a lot <laughs> uh, and all the experience you have and I don't feel like I can do it quite uh, justice. So if you just want to give everybody a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your business. Yeah, sure. Um, you're right. I did a lot of things over the last 20 odd years, yes. but, but you know, it's all been curiosity about us, about the human being and how we... I'm really curious about how we operate, why we do the things we do, why things happen to us. Yeah. And, then and then when I started to get into the human body, I got even more curious yeah. about the level of feedback. So that got me even more curious on what we work. So I went on a deep dive, studied everything about us, our body, the mind, the soul, energy, and now I'm here. I now want to take everything and put it together and see how, because when someone comes in, you're not just a joint, you're not just a muscle, you're not just a meridian, you're not just a nutrition, you're everything, all of it all in one. Absolutely. So yeah, your psychology affects your physiology and vice versa. So you can't separate one from the other. You know, since I started getting into nutrition, I saw that from a cellular level, things, when you finally develop a condition, it comes from a cell level and then yeah. it manifests into your skin into your psychology i mean everything the gut is they're starting to find out a lot of things come from the gut in your immune system cool. your serotonin your mood your your sleep the gut is is a huge area for to study on our whole physiology yeah so there's not one way you can separate one from the other so i'm just passionate about how we work yeah well it sounds like when people come to see you they're not just they think they're maybe coming in for one thing, <laughs> but they're really coming in to be helped yes. in a holistic way. That allows them yes. to walk away with, okay, well, not you're not just giving me an ointment or something for my knee, you're asking me how I got to this injury. How, can, yes. how what else is going on in my life to help me connect so I can be well, not only with whatever the injury is, but overall as I continue on their journey, so. Yeah, definitely. There's a great story. I don't know if I told him the book. I can't remember if I told him the book. There's a great story about a young guy who had skin issues when he was young. He had he broke out in all kinds of skin tags, and he was he was oozing on his skin. They couldn't figure out what was going on yeah. with him, and he was very young. But after being in a, a study and being researched in depth, he went to a, a hypnotist. Someone told him, "Go check out this hypnotist," and he thought, "You know, it's the last ditch resort. Let me try it out. Yeah. Nothing to lose." He went and they found out that he, he was manifesting his mom's radiation treatment. She was getting okay. radiation at the same time. Yeah. He started to manifest all her symptoms through his own skin. Yeah. So, you know, this is how psychologically everything can manifest into your body. And you just don't know. With the human body, I, we haven't figured it out yet. You know, even science, I mean, all these great masterminds are out there working on these diseases today and they still can't figure it out. Yeah. And you figured out how we birth the process happens. Absolutely. You know, it's the human body, I think was made that way. So we still stay. Yeah, one of the things I found really interesting is that you, as people, as we go along in our healing process and things like that, we start to realize that the people who are healing us need to know more. Uh, they need to specialize in a lot more. And I think you're one of the trailblazers for people to recognize that, there's so much more that someone, when we go to someone who's going to help us, that they need to know. And it's not maybe just uh, someone who's a specialist in this one area or that area. You kind of encompass everything. Right? No, I appreciate that you say that because that is, that is my vision is, 
is how can we treat the whole person yeah you know and yeah it's it's i for me it, i'm like a mad scientist in my room when i work with people it's it's uh, my mind just goes crazy and all these con connections you know with organs and glands and it, we're just so complex it's it's amazing and beautiful and frustrating at the same time so uh, so I had some questions for you that I, I won't personally want to ask, and hopefully everybody else will find them interesting. Um, you had some goals in the past to be a part of the Olympics. Right. Uh, and so, but I think life was really calling you to do something else, as we can see now. Um, yeah. When was in that moment where you had that goal to be a part of the Olympics, but you started to, we always know sometimes when you have that calling to go somewhere else, so what was that like? When did do you remember that moment when that shift happened, where your mindset started to change and say, maybe the Olympics is not the way, but maybe I'm meant to heal and help people. Yeah. Well, this is a great, great question. Um, you know, there's two two ways. One, you have to figure out what is it really that you want to do. So is it is it that I really wanted? It was the Olympics a real thing I wanted to do or did I want to I love for me boxing and all the things I did yeah. there were there were I did it because it was a fear of mine fighting was a fear yeah and I wanted to get over that fear so I, so I started taking boxing martial arts different things for me to help me get over the fear of getting into that ring so I always thought you know I'd love to tell people about once you figure fear it becomes the foundation of your new strength yeah. So every time I went into the ring, it wasn't to that I wanted to, to fight somebody. It was more my getting over my roadblock. Okay. And so I thought to myself, you know, I always wanted to, how do I express this to people and, and, and give this information to them? Yeah. So that was kind of in the background. I didn't know what it meant. I just, I, I entered the ring for others, for to tell a story. And that's why I entered the ring. I wasn't an angry person. I wasn't, you know, I didn't have a chip on my shoulder. I just... I did it as an art. I studied it like I studied the body yeah. because I actually loved the the thought process behind it. And so it was more of my own self there. Yeah. So the second part of that, though, is I knew I wanted to sh to share with people to be brave and to be courageous. Yeah. So that was more the reason why I entered the ring. That was more of my thing. And the second part of my answer to that, though, is once you do get an inkling, of what you love because a lot of people when I ask them that question so what do you want to do a lot of people you know after I think after I asked some kids about this when did you lose your creativity and your courage and they said once they entered uh, high school yeah they started to lose their, their creativity and the, the courage and start to we start to fall in line with all everybody, what everybody should, should do yeah. so I think it's courage then after you figure out what you get a little pilot light of what do I love because a lot of people remember what they love yeah like after a while, I asked some people, so what is it that you, when you were a kid, what did you get excited about? What did you, what did you want to do? You know, and a lot of people don't know. They really, I don't know. They just leave it there. I don't know. I have no idea what. So we lose our vision for who, what we want. So my thing is once I got the inkling that what I want to do is help people, yeah. I, I was brave enough to take the lead and kept going. And then one thing tied into the next and tied into the next. And things just led me. My curiosity led me to where I am today. Yeah. You know, I didn't get all those designations to brag. They were just literally curiosity. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I followed it. And it's interesting that you say curiosity because I think that's something that we forget about sometimes while we're on our journey, to stay curious. Yeah. Uh, sometimes yeah. people call it stay hungry. But I think yeah. staying curious is just as important. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how that's how most things are solved in our world. Yeah. People are curious. Why is it like this? Or how can I make it better? It's curiosity. Yeah. And I think the other piece that you said there is how can I make it better is that mm. root foundation to keep going. Like, yeah. do you find that people, when you meet with people, do they ask, they, do you ask them that question and they have that response? Like, I just want something to be better, but they don't know how. Yeah. Or, you know, the other thing they do is they think that somebody else is doing it. So... Why, why, why bother? Someone else is already there. Or maybe they're great at it. Yeah. Maybe, you know, you want to get into speaking, but you see a great speaker and you say, oh, I can never be like that. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. one thing I know is that 
everybody brings a different flavor. Yeah. So your message might be right for a small audience. Yeah. But those, yeah. that audience will make you super happy. Yeah. So you're not going to please everybody. So just do your thing. There's lots of Tim Hortons. There's lots of uh, second cups. Yeah. You know, everybody has a space. Yeah, absolutely. I guess yeah. the other piece of that question is um, you had a quote in your book and it's called, I'm reading it now, sorry, if I'm looking away. Uh, it's about being vulnerable and brave in order to go after the life you most desire. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people find that piece about being vulnerable challenging to explore, but you've mm -hmm. clearly explored being vulnerable and from reading your book, you've shared a lot of uh, your personal experience. Uh, it's kind of a side off question, but I think it connects with the curiosity piece about yeah. vulnerability and curiosity because in order, I think in order to be curious, you have to be a bit vulnerable at the same time. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. can you tell us maybe a little bit more about that vulnerability piece? Well, yeah, vulnerability is huge. It's huge. It's the part where you're not afraid to fail. Yeah. You're not afraid to look silly. You're not afraid to dance like nobody's watching. You know, after a while, we just, we, we dumb it down. We, we hear some, a piece of music at a party and we sit in the chair and we kind of move, <laughs> but we don't want to get up and actually let loose. And dance, yeah. You know? yeah. After you, we, we, someone, you know, like for instance, I go to Toastmasters yes. and they'll, they'll say, anyone want to volunteer? And everybody puts their hands down, but if you call them out, they'll come up. Yeah. So everyone's always willing to be pulled out from the shadows and stuck in it, but they won't take that initiative and do it. So yeah. being vulnerable, you, you really life, especially today with social media and you can put it and someone's got, you know, got their cold word and they're attacking somebody and, yeah. you know, even, even superstars get mean tweets, you know, so it's, it's even tougher today to be who you are, who you truly are, because people yeah. are out there ready to condemn. But you got to think to yourself, if I was on my deathbed, um, would I, and I lived the life I was supposed to, would I be happy? And the answer would be yes, you know, as opposed to yeah. living small so that some everybody else can be happy around you, you know? So, yeah. and the funny thing is, I, here's another thing real quick. I always say, you know, everyone always complains how much we pay athletes, actors, celebrities, how much we pay them and how, but you know, you want to know why we pay them so much? Because they're living the life that we wish we could live. They're yeah. living out a... Yeah, they're living out what we wish we could live. Yeah. So we, we reward them with millions of dollars. We will complain, but we'll still buy the tickets and go and watch. <laughs> because they're living out, we're stuck behind the bars of our own insecurities and say, wow, they're living, I wish I could do that, you know, but we can. Yeah. But they are brave enough to take the chance and do it. Absolutely. And um, that's yeah. where that sounds like from your book where you talk about being brave and vulnerability and how they intertwine. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, and you know, that's a great thing I learned from boxing as well. One of the lessons I learned from boxing is once I step up those three steps and into the ring, yeah. everybody leaves. My corner people leave. It's just me and that person ahead of me. So you can think of that person as the stage, speaking in public, yeah. writing your book, whatever it is. You have to face that and you have to conquer it because that is your opponent ahead of you. It's whatever it is that you fear. Maybe you got, you know, my next book that I'm writing, it's called... Uh, you know, the unlived life, basically. I want to talk about the unlived life because once I wrote my book, Secrets of an Unlived Life, when I wrote my book, a lot of people came up to me and said, oh, you wrote that book, that's amazing. Um, you know, I have some artwork that I've had down in my basement that I haven't done. So, you know, that makes me think about all these people who have things in their basement yeah. and they're, that they're great at, but yeah. they put it away because they're afraid of being ridiculed or afraid of being, you know, being vulnerable basically but you got to be vulnerable that's everyone everyone that we admire is vulnerable absolutely and your your new book it's called i'm just uh writing it down so people can look for it later in the chat it's the secrets of the unlived life is that what you said secrets, sir? secrets of an unlived life is seekers. kind of what i'm saying seekers so someone who's seeking okay the unlived life. yeah because we all have this life that we, we have it's a quote. I forgot whose quote it is, but they say we have two lives. The one we put out there, we go to work every day, and then in, yeah. in behind us is another whole life, an adventurous life that we want to live. But yeah. in between the two, in between the two is our ability to be vulnerable and go for it. So I want to talk about that. I think there is a lot of people who are living. It's almost like you're living in two worlds. 
Yeah. Uh, and I think a lot of people are living in two worlds where you have your, like you said, that life that is in the box. <laughs> yep. And then yep. we visualize and fantasize about a life without the walls of the All box. Day All day long. We, if we're not living the way, that's again, that's why we pay these people so much money. Yeah. And we, we put them on pedestals because we do, we have every single 7.0 billion people, if we're lucky enough to be in a free world, we have something that we can give. We have a special talent. No, I, I, I totally under, I've never thought about it in that way before, but it totally makes sense because um, it's people who have taken that childhood dream that you talked about earlier and that passion and they've brought it to fruition. Yeah, they're brave enough. Yeah. Because sometimes you can be, sometimes you can be turned by, you know, well-meaning parents who have maybe have suffered a loss themselves and thought, you know, I don't want you to suffer that way. Yeah. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to uh, protect you. So I'm going to tell you all the bad things that can happen if you start that business. Yeah. Or if you do this, or oh, don't do that. You know. Meanwhile, they may have not done the steps that you're going to do to make sure it's safe. Absolutely. So, you know, so then you get scared. You know, that's the way it is. Yeah. But then we have someone like you to help us. Get work through the fear <laughs> so <laughs> that's perfect that's i don't mind being that guy mm. um i had another question for you um and so what's your daily routine to stay motivated and connected all right so i have some non-negotiables that i do no matter what i get up and i do these things. I feel like if you have I a pen so far you should write this down <laughs> okay i think if you if you get up and hope a lot of people say you know when i ask somebody what do you want to? What do you want from this? They want to be yeah. happy, or they want to be peace. Want peace. So I often ask, "What can you describe happy for me?" Yeah. And you know, a lot of people can't describe what happiness is. Yeah. They can't describe what joy yeah. is. So, I how can you get it if you can't describe it? How do you know you're having happiness yeah. if you can't describe yeah. it? So what I'm getting at is. You 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 can't expect happiness to jump on you one day and then oh look I'm happy. Yeah. You have to you have to condition yourself to go out and get it. So what what I do every morning is I get up nice and early, so I can have that quiet time. For me, 5 a.m. I'm in the 5 a.m. club. Yeah. Oh, um, awesome. Yeah, I'm there because you know what? No phones ring at that time. There's no nobody needs me at that time. No kids to take okay. anywhere. It's just my and it's it's so quiet. It is so quiet. I can think. Yeah. You know, I couldn't do the alarm clock ring and jump into the car and into the traffic thing every morning when do you have time to process when do you have time to make sure that your thoughts are your own so i get up nice and early i meditate i read i read a, a book that's productive um and then i write and then i then i start setting at about six o'clock i start to do a little workout 45 minute workout and then i send my emails for the morning and then i'm all set then my then i can put my day away because after that, I'm with clients all day and dropping the kids yeah. and running around. So I make sure that I have my time. I need my time every morning. So you should, everyone listening should have their time. Absolutely. Whether it be their moment of the day when they can connect with their higher selves. And that that so. piece where you said at the end there, connecting with your higher self, allowing your mind, your body, and your spirit to all connect as one before you start your day, it sounds like that's what you do. Yeah. It must. It's a non-negotiable. I, 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 I have to get people. You know, a lot of people jump out of bed. They put on news and news is speaking to them. When do you have time to actually govern what you think and how you, your day, what is your day about? You know, when do you have time to do that? When do you take time to make sure that it's your thought? Yeah. You, someone didn't suggest how you should think or suggest what you should think about, you yeah. know? Because um, all day long we've been bombarded by incoming stimulus and and news and friends and water cooler talk and yeah. when do we have time to guide our own way? So yeah, so rituals in the morning: meditate, work out, and write and read. Absolutely, I think that's if we can all get up and start our day like that, it would impact all the interactions we have with everybody else from that moment on. Yeah, yeah, because it were. 93% of communication is nonverbal. Yeah. So all day long, we're exchanging energy. We're always, you know, when we see someone, it's, we, we're going on feel. We just feel. Yeah. We're so sensitive. Yeah. And so I think that's the key to really getting started. And 
we forget to make that time in the morning. We might jump for a coffee or we might jump for a tea or we might jump to the food before we actually get our mind and our body settled in together. Yeah, you control, what I'm gonna, the advice I was telling you is you control, you control your day. You're the director, I was, I was bringing this to my class that I was teaching on Tuesday. You are, seriously, you're the director of this movie. And this movie could be a, a, a comedy, yeah. adventure, uh, you know, something scary. Yeah. You're the director though, you call cut, you call action, you, you're, you're it. You're, you call the characters in, whatever you give attention yeah. to, that becomes the character. Yeah. So it's all up to you. Um, the other question I had, which it really, it's, I want people to read your book so they can know more about it. But on page 82, you really actually start talking about what you, what your routine is. And so you didn't only write about it in your book, uh, but you actually do it every morning. And that's a really mm -hmm. cool thing about connecting with somebody who's trying to teach you something but that, you know, like mm -hmm. I asked you that question and you didn't have to think about it. Every morning you get up, meditate, read, write, exercise, like it's a done deal. <laughs> and so yeah. uh, I just want everybody to know that it's, it's in the middle of the book around page 82, uh, Alvin starts to talk about what are some of the things they're called your greatness exercise, how to balance your mental essence. Um, yeah. And he goes on to give you like four things that you can do. And the four things are meditation, journaling, affirmations, and language patterns. Um, so I just want to know if you can just expand a little bit on the language patterns, because I think that's one of the things that people might not know too much about. Okay, yeah, um, I'm looking at Dan's, Dan's routine, Dan Kohlenberg. I, I love that routine. So, um, yeah, so language pattern. Language patterns are hugely okay. important. Yeah, language, let's, let's last, again, at the last night's class, I was talking about language being a form of energy. Yeah. And how you put words, words are so hugely important. How many of us on this call have had someone say something to us years, decades ago, and it still rings in your head? Yeah. Like, you know, sometimes I think verbal, verbal abuse is worse than physical abuse at Absolutely. times. You know, because that, that will stick around forever and it makes, it shapes you. You know, that person who said you'd never be anything yeah. or you never amount to anything or whatever it is, those words, they never go away. Yeah. And the, the, the brain is, the, the brain is timeless. We created the time like six o'clock, yeah. you know, I'm 20 years old. Those are all created by us. But in reality, the, the subconscious mind is timeless. It doesn't understand that you're 50. Yeah. When you go back to the reunion, you're still five years old. That person still treats you like you're five and you revert back to yeah. five. So language is hugely important. What we say to others can, can you know, NLP, New Linguistic Program, it has a quote. It says, the meaning of communication is the response you get. So if you're speaking to your child and you're not responding the way you want, change the way you communicate. Yeah. Or if you're speaking to your spouse and you're not getting a response, change the way you communicate. Yeah. Words are so powerful. Yeah. They change words. Are, and it's what you say to yourself, too. Yeah. Right, what you say to yourself is hugely important. Yeah. You know, Muhammad Ali just passed away. He was the master of "I am the greatest," and he ended up being leaving a legacy behind. Yeah. Right, but it, it was that was more for the it was more for him. Yeah. Because a lot of times we beat ourselves up. Right, sixty thousand thoughts a day. They say you know eighty percent, ninety percent is negative. Yeah. You know what I didn't do right, and what, and you know we beat ourselves up. So it's hugely important for us to have. To what we say to ourselves and watch our words. Words are powerful. Yeah, hugely powerful. No, it's um, it's important to that you remind us all about that uh, because the words that we speak in our mind are so huge. Uh, it shapes oh, our day. Um, it shapes how we connect with somebody when they say something to us that sets us off. Um, that self talk yeah. is really crucial to to exploring huge. a journey of success huge. because you get to those. Huge. Yeah. And that's why yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Absolutely. That, that's why I'm so careful about what goes in my head too. I don't put the news on. Yeah. I don't watch the news. I don't listen to the news. Yes, it's important to find out what's going on, but do we have to watch ten hours of yeah. it to really yeah. get it? We get it once that someone was shot in Orlando. We get it, and and we pray for them that it happened. But to dig it deeper and deeper and deeper, and then start to paint the world in a negative way. When you in reality, when in reality, it's a small amount of people who are, in reality, our world's beautiful. We've come a long way, and there's a lot of great things, advances that are happening in the world. 
But if we focus on just what's not happening, that's uh, going to be our world. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely important to try to, I actually haven't had cable in eight years, so I totally understand. <laughs> I understand That's completely awesome. what you're saying about the news. Oh, so awesome. yeah. It's all repetitive. Like we so, can have 6,000 channels on there, but we only watch two shows. So absolutely. It really, absolutely. yeah. Um, I had another question for you. Um, and this is more for me, I, <laughs> but I hope everyone else can benefit from it. Uh, so one of my questions is, uh, can you tell me a little bit more about cranial sacral therapy? Um, cause I don't know if maybe other people know about it, but I would definitely like to just have a snippet if you can of expanding on that a little bit, because I know that's one of your, that's in your toolbox. Yeah. All right. So hold on tight to this. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So the, the idea here is that there's 22 bones in the head, Okay. right? right? That will form. It hits a baby soft spot when it comes together and form. You can feel the baby soft yes. spot cause it hasn't fully formed over yet by about age five. It's, it's formed over and it's, you know, tight junctions. The, 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 the cranium is tight junctions that are coming yeah. together and they're held together by membranes, fibrous membranes that are tight. Yeah. Um, what the idea behind craniosacral is that we can put our hands on your head and we can get an awareness if there's tensions between left and right, okay. front and back, or, you know, anywhere in the head. Okay. And we learn by anatomy, we learn to manipulate the various sutures to help ease and spread the tension so it eases the, the whole nervous system basically okay. because inside the cranium obviously is the brain yeah. and out of the out of the hole is the spinal cord okay. so if we can liberate and free up those areas you get a better nervous system flow okay. everything else and and the sub the the deeper part of the brain the old pa paleo brain yeah. is in the lower half so when we fill those up we free up respiration okay. we can help with so many different things and there's one particular nerve that supplies the lung the heart the liver the kidneys it's called the vagus nerve and it travels down and you can liberate yeah. that nerve to free that up okay through the cranium and is it like through like um pressing on the scalp no pressing it's it's, it's putting if you use too much pressure it's such a subtle technique yeah. that you're it, it takes a light touch okay. because the heavier my pressure is the more i'm not sensing yeah and the more I'm focused on my hands, okay. if it's a light pressure, almost when I tell people I'm doing it, I say, listen, it's gonna be like eavesdropping on a conversation. Okay. If I'm eavesdropping, I don't want you to know I'm listening. I'm just kind of over here listening, but I'm subtle. Okay. So it's kind of like that when, I'm, when I have my hands on, I'm subtly listening for tension. Okay. But if I do too much pressure, your natural reaction is to tighten. I don't want you to tighten. So a lot of people actually fall asleep during the technique. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's that's one of the many tools in your toolbox. I just wanted you to take a moment to let people know that that's that's part of your what do you offer as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, and the, I had one more. I mean, last question, and then I'll give people a few minutes to ask you a question or two, if that's okay. Sure. Um, so my last yeah, question sure. is, uh, you had some experience. So the cranial sacral therapy comes from in the book. Uh, Alvin shares a couple of his experiences. So cranial sacral is experience number two. <laughs> Uh, I had a question mm -hmm. about experience number three uh, with mm -hmm. your niece, uh, the loss of your niece. Right. And you said something yeah. so beautiful. I feel like I should, I wrote it down somewhere. <laughs> um, but you started to talk about how you realize it's the breath that connects us to life. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. when I read that, it just, it sunk in and it sat for a while and it, it just made so much sense. So I just wanted you to share a little bit about that. Okay, yeah, so the breath is huge, um, is a huge part of our physiology. When you think about it, when you're born, I was talking with a nurse, and they say when they're born, the baby gets, you know, when the baby starts to cry, it signals that breath is in the body, and they look at the time, and they say, okay, you know, 6.45, born. Yeah. When, when you're with someone who passes away, if someone's there in that special moment, they notice that the last thing they do is they take a breath. Yeah. <laughs> And then they pass. And then you realize, you realize that there's the, that person isn't there anymore. The spirit isn't there anymore. You know, although the body is there, we're sad that the, the, this is sad. But when we look at them, we don't think they're actually there. Yeah. We, we, it's, it, you realize they're not there anymore. They're gone. But the breath went. Yeah. And, you know, when you, when you think about life throughout, when I put my hands on people and I feel the body, I feel this rhythm, yeah. this breath, and the, I realize that the breath is everything. Yeah. You know, it, it, it feeds everything. It, it's, it's, 
So it's a connection between life and death. It's a bridge between. Yeah, I think you, you so. mentioned that in your book, the breath is a bridge between life and death. Yeah. Um, and that's yeah. a really powerful yeah. statement. We often don't make that connection. Um, we experience grief, but we forget that yeah. it sounds like you learn something profound through that experience. Yeah. Have you ever noticed that when you're wandered off in thought and you finally come back, it's the breath that brings you back? You kind of, you take a sign and you come back. You know, when you're under a lot of stress and you're off wandering, it's a breath. And what do we do when we're under stress too? We stop breathing properly. And what do they tell you to do? To breathe because it relaxes you. So it's, the breath is so, we, and we forget how to do it properly here. Yeah. You know, in, in North America. We breathe from here to here. <laughs> we breathe from here to here. It's very short. We're not the diaphragm is usually important yeah. because the diaphragm has a lot of nerves around it to help you know, facilitate the, the, the organs and the account of the the, the, uh, the veins to pump things back and forth and need the good diaphragm yeah. breathing. So it's, it's huge. The lymphatic system is right there. It, the breath and the diaphragm is huge. we got to really learn to reuse that again. Now, that's one of the things that you include in your practice, I understand, is the meditation piece and the breathing. Yeah. Yeah, the, it's huge. Uh, yeah, meditation, I want to... We have had meditation at our clinic for years now, and we've been pushing for that. But a lot of people don't have time to stop, yeah. which is an oxymoron because we all know when we relax, we, we, we get more creative, yeah. we get more, we get happier. Yeah. But somehow we run on a treadmill and figure we can't stop. Absolutely. But I'm gonna keep pushing and um, I'll fill my meditation class. Yes, keep pushing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Meditation is really important. It, it can transform the body and transform the mind. Uh, and you, I believe it's, uh, if you do med there's a study that was done by Harvard. If you do meditation for eight weeks for 45 minutes a day, you could, they can actually, they've proven that you can grow gray matter in your brain. Yeah, you get, you yeah. can. So it's just, it's really powerful. So if you live in Durham, you can sign up for yeah. meditation with Elvin. <laughs> uh, Got it, every Saturday. Yes, every Saturday. Um, so it. now I'm gonna. Uh, I'm not gonna take too much more of your time, Alvin. But I'm gonna give uh, open it up for people to ask you some questions. Now I'm gonna. I'm okay with that. I'm gonna apologize yeah. though. I, I'm looking at my battery oh, life okay, here. And it's, uh, yeah, but uh, let's go, go for ahead. it. Let's go until uh, I'm gonna apologize already uh, and ahead of time just in okay. case. So if anybody has any questions for Alvin or they want to come on the screen and ask him a question or just say thanks for tuning in you're welcome to do that and gold rush card i like uh i like we'll have to talk later gold rush card praise and then set the goal for the day and then execute that's excellent and prayer is a form of that entering that space of stillness as well yeah so that's great all right is there anything else like if one message to give people on their journey, what would it be? That's a hard question. I have, <laughs> I have four things that I say to people, four C's. Okay. Okay. One. I'm going to write them. The first C. Yeah, the first C. Get clear. What do you want? That's a big, if you can just take some time. I mean, trust me, it sounds simple, but it is not simple. What do you want? The world literally will give you what you ask for. Uh, it's unbelievable how that works. Okay. But a lot of people don't know what they want. They accept mediocrity. They accept uh, like it's been done this way so no one can change it. Yeah. So that's accepted. Yeah. But you, clarity. The second one is courage. Once you decide what you want, you got to be brave enough to do it. Whether you, whether you start something on Facebook or start a website or start a blog or start posting something about what you love and nobody says likes you might get two likes you might get no likes you might see here's the thing people are watching you when you start something new they're watching you they're wondering how long you're going to keep this up is this another fly by night thing because no one wants to join your your parade if you're going to quit and they're used yeah. to people starting something yeah. and losing steam so they're waiting so if you can go a year without anybody liking or nothing happening you're going to notice that all of a sudden Someone's going to start joining in one or two, yeah. and then you make yeah. sure you, you cultivate those ones and you keep going. So courage is the second C. Yeah. The next one is commitment. 
You got to be committed to see it through to the end. A lot of people start something, like I said, New Year's resolution. It goes to that. You know, they start New Year's resolutions and by, you know, three weeks to a month in and no one's at the gym anymore. It's our commitment. We got to keep going. Yeah. And the last one is consistency. Yeah. Everyone can be great. Everyone can be great once or twice. We can all hit it. One day we're just on. Bang. Oh, what an amazing, had an amazing workout or had an amazing yeah. time. But you got to be consistent. Yeah. Can you be consistent even when no one's watching? Again, I post videos uh, three times a week. I made a promise to myself that this year I'll post videos three times a week. And sometimes you get some people, yay, and sometimes you're not. And it, but you know what? I made a promise. Yeah. I'm going to consistently. Yeah. And one day, sometimes when we see superstars or we don't realize that they've been at it for 15 yeah. years, 10 years. Yeah. And we also go, oh, they came out of nowhere. No, they didn't come out yeah. of anywhere. You know, they started yeah. in the back room. They started doing And then by the time we see them, they look polished. No, they were rough at the beginning. So it, you just those are the four C's, I would say. So four C's, yeah. number one. So four C's, number Get one. Get clear about what you want. Get clear about what you want. Yes. Have courage, be brave. Have be courage, consistent. be brave. Once you find be out, be brave. Even though people might not be watching. Even though people might not be watching, we still have to be brave. Commit yes. and be Commit consistent. And be consistent. Yep. That's pretty huge. <laughs> That's pretty huge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those are them. So if you do that with any of your goals, like... Like I said, if you do your artwork and nobody buys yeah. it, you know, the first time I did a yeah. video, somebody said that was absolutely, I forgot the word she used, but it was like absolutely terrible. Why'd you do that? Oh. You're right. And I just said, you know what? It, I'm, it's coming from someone who never attempted anything themselves. Yeah. So I said, you know, that's okay. Yeah. I keep, I'm going to keep going. Because at one point, you can't be terrible all the time. You're gonna, at one point, you're going to learn a few things, and you're going to improve. So, you know, just keep going. Just keep going no matter what. You know, because one day you will wake up when you go, wow, I'm living the life that I dreamed yeah. of. You know, and it started yeah. off so rough. Everything's kind of rough at the beginning. You know, and then it gets the master was a, was a student at one time. Yeah. Uh, you said something, you said the master uh, was once a student, and I think that's really important yeah. for a lot of people to remember on their journeys, uh, whether it's to reach their goals or for success, wherever it might be, is that you have to be com be humble enough to be the student as you yeah. go along. Yeah, and always be, and I don't think even the master remains a student, because yeah. once a master stops learning, I think they're finished. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you are a master and you do keep learning because your toolbox is quite full and I'm sure it's still growing. Yes. Thank you. Yes, I'm going to make sure it does. <laughs> I've got the library at home. One of my goals is to read my entire library before I go. Ah, and how many books are in your tons. library? Lots of books. Oh, tons. Yeah. So I'm going to, yeah, there's a lot. Oh, that's great. I think someone came in earlier, uh, earlier and they said they had 1,200 books that they wanted to read. So. Yeah, I'm about, yeah, I'm, I'm probably half yeah. of that. Uh, reading's so yeah. important, and I'm. you know what, you have time, when you turn off the TV, you have time to read. Oh, yeah. Okay. People, they say the average person watches five to six hours a night. Wild. So, yeah. That's wild. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Elvin. If anybody else doesn't have any really more questions, awesome. I really, really appreciate uh, the fact that you took the time to uh, speak with us today, share your wisdom, share your knowledge, and just be present with us. Also, it's really cool that I have your book with me, and you gave me a message, me a message. last year. I don't know if you remember right. that day. And it still yeah. stays with me now. And I keep this book, as you can see, it's got tabs and highlights in it. So I encourage anybody uh, if you haven't already bought this book, to go out and buy it. I'll put the link in as soon as I'm done chatting here. It's Journey to Personal Greatness, Mind, Body, and Soul. And you will not be disappointed. Awesome. And Sue, uh, uh, Sue uh, Sutcliffe, I see you. That's awesome. Thank you. And it was you with the, no, it was Aaron with the 1,200 books. That's awesome. Yes. And thanks, Sue. Yeah, and Sue's also local. So you and Sue can, yeah, ah. Sue is a local uh, local business in Durham, and so she's also a great person to connect with, too. Awesome. But thank you, Elvin. Yeah. You're so intelligent, you're so smart, Thanks. you're so wise uh, and awesome, and well, just keep being that way, and I hope everybody who's watched reaches out. I'll post his website and where you can find him.
All right. Thank you, everybody who came on, who took the time. I know it's not easy for everyone to take the time out of their day to stop in, but I appreciate it. We appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a good night. <laughs> Thank you. All right. See ya. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye.